Hey everyone, in the following tutorials, I'm going to show you how to track interactions in Articulate Rise with XAPI. So the things that I'll be teaching you how to track in this video are page views, such as when you click on the tab over here and go to another page. And then I'll also be showing you how to track on-click interactions, such as when someone clicks on these tabs or clicks on these accordions down here. Then in some future videos, I'll be showing you how to track more advanced interactions such as video plays and completions and audio plays and completions. And then also looking at giving feedback within the tool and then um, probably something along the lines of like quiz questions. So in this first video, what we're going to do is we're going to hook up to our learning record store. So in order to do that, you're going to need one file from, or actually, sorry, two files from my GitHub. The two files are going to be this xapi.js and this xapi wrapper, which makes everything work. We'll be editing the xapi.js file. So what you want to do is click clone or download and download the zip to your computer. Next, what you'll need is a learning record store. You can use um, different ones like Yet Analytics. I'm using Learning Locker for this one. Um, and there's a ton of other ones out there, including I think ADL has one as well. So what I'm going to show you is in Learning Locker, you can either use Enterprise version or you can install your own open source version. But with Learning Locker, what you want to do is you'll be creating a client, which is how you'll hook up to your LRS so, um, or for your record store. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new client and I'm just going to call this one Articulate Rise Example. And what we'll be using in this one is the key and the secret because that's what's going to help us hook up to our learning record store from our storyline or from our RISE file, whatever you're, you're using. Um, but in this example, we'll be just showing for RISE. So with this, um, you can use any other learning record store and you might have a different way of connecting to your learning record store. This is just one way of doing it. Then what we won't need to do within this if you're using Learning Locker is choose a learning record store for that client to feed into. So that's where all your data is going to go. So for this one, I'm just going to put it into the live stream demo, even though this isn't a live stream. Then for the scopes, I need um, to select all of the scopes so then I can send over those statements from inside my RISE example. So I'm going to pop out of this for now and I want to open up my file that I just downloaded. So it's called xapi or xapi-master and you'll see we have a few things here. The readme is the instructions that are already on my GitHub and then I have the xapi.js and xapi wrapper. I'm going to open up the xapi.js with a text editor. You can use like um, a notepad that's on your computer or you can use a code text editor such as Sublime or Brackets or Atom. There's a lot of different ones and Sublime's a good free one so I like to use this one. And you're going to see a bunch of stuff within this file here. And in this file what you'll see is because we're, we don't have a sophisticated way of connecting to our learning record store what I'm doing is generating a random email address that then gets cached in the person's browser. So if they come back to the example, they'll still have the same random email address. That allows us to track interactions across different projects and also um, when people are coming back to the project. Then down here, these are some things that you don't necessarily have to worry yourself about the specifics, but I'm just gonna go over them very quickly. We have a function, so the send statement function is what fills in what our XAPI statement says and fills that in and sends it over to the learning record store. So it connects to our endpoint, which we have here, it's learning locker. And then the authentication, which I just showed you the key and the secret, that's what you put in here. 
And then um, inside of your RISE file, some of these other things get filled in, such as the verb, which we're going to use the verb experienced, the object ID, the name, and the description. And then in more complicated projects, you might have additional things such as extensions and then results, which could be for a test or something like that. But for today, we're only going to be editing possibly two things. So if you have a different learning record store, you'll need to change out the endpoint to whatever your learning record store endpoint is. If you're using the enterprise version of Learning Locker, this will be your endpoint. For the authentication, this is what's going to help us log in to the learning record store to be able to send statements. So the first part of this will be your key here. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And then I'm going to put the key right in here. And then you'll need a colon to um, append these two together so that it can get translated into um, a, a more secure login. So we're going to grab the secret and we'll put that right here. And that's all you need to edit in this file. So this is the file that we'll be hooking up to the learning record store. And next in the next video, what I'll be going over is how to put together your RISE file so that it will send the statements to this learning record store.